This is the Palin Update on Sarah Net Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. Everybody could learn from Newt Gingrich in the way, in his calm, cool, collected manner. He's kind of seen it all before in this political game, if you will. Today, we talk with one of the candidates for the Republican presidential nomination. Someone who Governor Palin has spoken very highly of, and it appears the feelings are mutual. Former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, is here. And a little later, we'll look back at Sarah Palin's comments this past week on insider trading and on a disgraced former football coach. But right now, our guest on the Palin Update. A man who is really rising in the polls big time right now, Republican candidate for president, Newt Gingrich, joins us. Speaker Gingrich, thank you so much for being here on the Palin Update. I am delighted to be with you. Now, Speaker, I have to share this with you quickly. When I first got into politics heavily, it was my last year of high school heading into college, and it was President George H.W. Bush's re-election campaign, and I really, really became a fan of Vice President Quayle. And when they ultimately lost, I was down. I mean, I didn't know how these things worked yet. It was kind of like a little kid when they realized their team doesn't win the World Series every year. And I couldn't understand why they lost when I agreed with most of what they were saying and hardly anything their opponents were saying. Well, then you came around, and your contract with America really put the pep back in my step as a young guy, and I understood, hey, Congress has a big role here, too, and not all is lost, and I I just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you. Listen, I really believe that uh, Winston Churchill was right when he said, never, 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 never give up. And if you really believe in what you believe in, and you really think it's right, then you just have to keep working forward no matter what happens. Now, Speaker Gingrich, we've seen people really fluctuate in the polls here. Uh, candidates like Bachman, Perry, and Kane. One moment they're the leader, at other times single digits, seemingly everywhere in between. You've kind of gradually gone up and up. Is this just a case of the best message getting out there little by little? I think so. I've told people that my real uh, model for this campaign is the, the turtle that just walks day by day by day and gets, you know, the bunny rabbit runs by and and the Esau Fatal, uh, the bunny rabbit then falls asleep. Uh, I think I can promise you uh, that the uh, campaign I'm running is based on substance. It's based on listening to the American people. It's based on unending hard work. And it's based on a partnership. I, I tell people all the time, I'm never going to ask you to be for me, because if you're for me, you're going to vote and go home and say, I sure hope he fixes it. I will ask you to be with me and to decide that together, for the next eight years, we can move this country in the right direction by working as a team. And I think as people listen to that, they realize this is different. This isn't politics as usual. This isn't the same old baloney. This is, in fact, something very different. You've praised Governor Palin again and again, and you said she was unfairly hit on the death panel's take. What do you have in common with the governor that Palin supporters can rally around? A lot of them right now still looking for a candidate. Look, I, I, Chris and I, the other night, watched uh, the new movie, The the Undefeated. Um, I was very positive about Governor Palin for a long time. I, I first met her when she became governor. She told me she'd been listening to my tapes for years. We chatted about reform. I was fascinated that she had the guts to take on her state party chairman and get him fired. Then she had the guts to take on the incumbent governor in the primary and beat him. Uh, I knew that she had done a great, great job negotiating with big oil and beating them, getting a deal that nobody had ever gotten before for Alaska. So I knew there was something unusual there. When John McCain was looking for a candidate, to be honest, I said to him, you have two choices, Uh, Sarah Palin and Bobby Jindal. There's not a third choice. You need somebody who breaks out of the normal Republican mode. Sarah combined being a woman with being a great, great reformer. Uh, Bobby combines being an Indian American first generation with being one of the most brilliant people in public life and a true expert in healthcare. Either one would have been great. He picked Sarah. I was thrilled. I thought that the McCain staff did the most destructive, mean introduction of a vice president I've ever seen. If they had taken the sections out of the undefeated that show her as a reformer, show her as mayor, show her as governor, show her doing the right thing over and over, if that had been her introductory 
uh, video for the American people, I think John McCain might be president today uh, because she is a, just a terrific talent. We agree on reform. We agree on energy. We agree on opening up federal lands. And we agree on the need for integrity in our political system. And uh, I truly admire her, and I think she has enormous courage. Kevin Shola talking with presidential candidate Newt Gingrich here on the Palin Update on Serenet Radio. Mr. Speaker, you've been very positive toward your GOP opponents while calling out the media and hammering away at Obama, all while using humor, common sense, and most importantly, knowledge. I think it's resonating. Do you think your approach and your overall demeanor is winning people over? I think people are so sick of politics as usual. They're so sick of negativity and pettiness and smallness. Uh, they're so sick of the consultants' obvious negativity. And I think also, having watched Obama as an amateur just wreck this country, realizing that, you know, being totally ignorant is not a good thing. Um, I think people came into this campaign looking for something fundamentally, profoundly different. I'm 68 years old. I've been actively trying to understand America for 53 years since I was 15 years old. I've only had three assignments in my life. My dad was a career soldier for 27 years, and I took seriously the idea of serving your country, of the West Point tradition of honor, duty, country. And my three assignments were understand what America needs to be successful, understand how to explain it to the American people so they give you permission to do it, understand how to implement it once they give you permission. Now. There's nobody else in this race that has had anything like that depth of experience and depth of effort. I'm not saying I was always right. I cast 7,200 votes. I've made 15 or 20,000 speeches. I've written 24 books. I mean, if you want to go back through my career, you're going to find mistakes. Uh, but I am deeply, passionately committed to freedom, and I'm deeply, passionately committed to the idea of America. And I want my two grandchildren... Maggie, who is 12, and Robert, who is 10, to grow up in the kind of free, safe, prosperous country that I grew up in. And I'm happy to spend the rest of my life trying to give them that opportunity. Talk about your experience, sir. Did you, uh, you're dealing with President Clinton when you were Speaker. Did that give you some really invaluable experience that really no other candidate can have his or her name on their resume? Well, I think it, it makes me different from everybody else on the Republican side. But let me also say something positive about Bill Clinton. Um, this is a guy who tried to move the Democratic Party to the center, founded the Democratic Leadership Council. Um, as governor for 12 years in Arkansas, a relatively conservative state, he'd had to negotiate with the state legislature. He understood negotiating. Um, he and I fought like crazy on some issues, uh, but we also understood that if I couldn't get his signature, nothing would become law. If he couldn't get me to schedule it, Nothing would get to his desk. So we had a mutual balance of power that made us, just forced us to work together. I get the sense that John Boehner, who I admire a great deal as a friend and as a speaker, has a hopeless job because I don't think Barack Obama has one clue about how to negotiate. I think he spent all of his years in the Illinois Senate trying to get to be a U.S. senator and all of his years in the Senate trying to become a U.S. president, and he has never spent one day in the legislative body for practical purposes, and he has no idea how to sit down and work with legislators and get things done. Now, from that purely practical standpoint, I think I bring to the job dramatically more information, dramatically more understanding than any other candidate on the Republican side. Yeah, it's definitely been a my way or the highway situation from the White House. If elected, could you see uh, Governor Palin as someone you would call upon for help? Absolutely. I, I can think of three or four major assignments I'd want her to look at, from energy to opening up federal lands to designing a real uh, program of integrity for all of government. I think she'd be a fabulous reformer. And I think, frankly, setting her loose in Washington for a while, uh, opening up the system and uh, raising some challenging questions about ethics uh, would be just uh, it'd be good for America to see that happen. Finally, sir, Governor Palin has declared you the winner of debates, and she says you would just clobber President Obama in a debate. Do you agree, and are you looking forward to the opportunity to share a stage with the president? Well, look, I was very flattered uh, when she said that. I thought it was a very kind thing for her to say. What I have said is that I will challenge President Obama 
to seven three-hour Lincoln-Douglas-style debates with a timekeeper and no moderator, that we owe the country a serious national discussion. And I hope you'll agree to take it. I have some ideas in mind to make him take it. But I want you to know that it's not about my winning or his winning. It's about America winning by having two adults seeking to be the leader of the country, having the courage to stand there and have an honest conversation about our values, our beliefs, and our facts. And I think, much like the Lincoln-Douglas debates and much like the Federalist Papers, if the president will agree to it, it will create one of the great, unique, living documents that make America such a remarkable country. Well, Speaker Gingrich, we look forward to things as the race continues to unfold. We really appreciate you joining us here, and we wish you the best of luck here as you head down the stretch, or I guess we're to that point yet. These things are longer than they used to be, right? Oh, it's going to be a long run, uh, but I'm thrilled by the number of people who go to newt.org, my personal account, and who work on it, and I think it is just fabulous how many people have agreed to help me. Well, sir, thank you. And thank your wife for the great new books. Uh, The three-year-old is very happy with those. And, you know, I'm so proud of Calista. Uh, Her very first children's book, Sweet Land of Liberty, uh, Ellis the Elephant, Introducing Young People to American Patriotism and American History, makes the New York Times bestseller list. As somebody said the other day, we now have dueling authors in our household, two two New York Times bestsellers in the same household. Uh, But she has done, I watched her write it, uh, it kept us going during the summer. It was such a happy, positive thing. And I recommend it to any parent or grandparent. If you have children who are under eight, they're going to be thrilled to get to know Ellis the Elephant. Good stuff. Newt Gingrich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Take care. Newt Gingrich, flying high these days. We'll see if he can keep the momentum going as we move ahead in the race for the White House. Governor Palin penned an op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal in response to a 60 Minutes story that focused on allegations of insider trading in D.C. The governor argues politicians derive power from the authority of their office and their access to our tax dollars, and they use that power to enrich and shield themselves. The governor goes on to say members of Congress exempt themselves from the laws they apply to the rest of us. Perhaps the most important line from the governor, something for these 2012 contenders to take note of, quote, this call for real reform must transcend political parties, unquote. This past week, the governor also reminded her supporters why they support her so much. The Mama Grizzly came out big time in response to the horrific child sexual abuse scandal at Penn State. Palin said former assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky should be punished to the fullest extent of the law if he is truly guilty. She added, hang him from the highest tree. I'll bring the rope. Some of that straight talk that Palinistas can't get enough of. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Be sure to visit saranet.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin, our radio show, plus plenty of articles from yours truly and our Saranet contributors. Also, follow us on Twitter at Saranet Radio, and we are now on Facebook, so make sure you like Saranet Radio on Facebook. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Speaker Newt Gingrich. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.